Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is, this is Insights in the Teens, right? Yeah, yes. okay. This is episode 65, uh, Food and Cooking. Uh, if I sound a little confused today, that's only because it's Friday. Uh, I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my talented and responsible co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, dear? Pretty normal. Pretty normal. Normal is good these days. And normal is hard to get these days. Yeah. Um, so last week we did a uh, Q&A. Yep. And part of that Q&A, we talked about some topics relating to food. We talked about what your healthy, what your favorite foods are and something like that. Yeah. Um, so we decided to have a follow-up and one of the things we wanted to talk about in the follow-up was some healthy eating habits specifically for teens. Um, then we'll talk about one of the things I thought was kind of important in my research for this was the importance of family dinner. We enjoy it. Um, we're fortunate enough to be able to do it ourselves and there's legitimate benefits to it. And then in our third segment today, we're going to talk about teens and cooking and what the benefits are, why you want to get your teens to start cooking, some simple tips to get your teens to cook. And we have some footage of uh, a couple of meals that you had uh, helped to prepare. And we'll talk about some of your cooking habits as well. So ready to get started? Sure. All right, let's do it. So, uh, I did research on healthy eating habits and it's funny cause if you, if you watch the, uh, video version of the podcast, you can't help but know I'm a relatively large individual. Um, so you would think that I don't know much about healthy eating and the sad thing is I know a lot about healthy eating. I just don't follow it. Yeah. Um, I happen to be diabetic, so understanding my dietary intake is very important to regulate my blood sugar. Um, I just am not very successful in my attempts to lose weight, my many, many attempts. However, we're not talking about that today. We're talking about teens and healthy eating. And the, the type of diet that teens typically have to follow is a little bit different than adults. Uh, your bodies need different nutrients and, and different minerals to grow with. So, um, there are suggestions on what to eat and what not to eat. And I just want to go down the list and throw some of these out there and, and get your reaction to them. All righty. So, first of all, we're going to talk about what to eat. And some of this stuff is pretty obvious. Fruits and vegetables. Um, they suggest, uh, most uh, most government agencies suggest uh, five portions of fruit per day. And, and a portion is about the size of an apple. Um, they suggest dried fruit. And fruit juices, along with smoothies, count as well. How are you with your fruit and vegetable intake, Maddie? Well, I can definitely say I'm more of a fruit, fruit person than a vegetable person. There are vegetables that I do like, but I tend to gravitate, gravitate more towards fruit. I do eat vegetables typically whenever we have um, our dinners. Um, we normally have salad or some type of like broccoli or frozen or canned food now. Um, but I definitely think I'm gravitating more towards fruit. Um, for, we, I also typically always have um, tomatoes at dinner, um, which are fruit, just saying. 
Uh, I definitely don't debate that. Um, I sometimes have them when I have lunch, whenever mommy wants to, like, throw in some extra stuff. I also typically eat grapes, and I've started eating strawberries now, especially after my answer in the last podcast, so, um... I'd say I'm pretty good on fruits and vegetables. Um, most of them are good. Some I just prefer not to eat, but I've started eating more. Um, I've started eating more salad, and uh, yeah. Okay. Well, good answer. Um, I think you do have a fairly balanced diet when it comes to fruits and vegetables. The next one I talk about is carbs. Now, most human beings are either uh, a carnivore which is a person who eats meat, a her, an er, herbivore who just eats vegetables, or an omnivore who eats both. You're what we call a carbivore, <laughs> though. You do like your carbs, don't you? Yep, specifically bread. So and and so some of the good sources of carb uh, of of carbs out there, carbon. Yeah, you know, some of the good sources of carbs out there they talk about are fiber. Um, uh, well, I'm sorry, whole grains that have high fiber and vitamin B, brown rice. Um, and one thing you don't like to do, and that's leaving the skin on the potatoes that you eat. So that is where a lot of the nutrients come from is the skin. Now, starchy foods typically tend to be low in fat, and they do protect against some cancers, and they help you feel full. You can attest to that with the bread that you eat, right? So do you think you consume a healthy amount of carbs, uh, excessive amount of carbs? What are your thoughts on your carb intake? Well, mommy can stop me from eating a lot of bread, that's for sure. Um, she'll stop me from eating, like, as much as I would probably want to eat. Um, and she also tries to... And she also, um, instead of using whole wheat buns one time when we were making sandwiches, she used... Um, well, sh- instead of whole ro- rolls, I don't know. The, um, white, the, the white bread style. Yeah, the white bread. Um, she gave me whole wheat flatbread, which I think is healthier, I'm assuming. Yeah, technically it is because of the processing of the wheat. Yeah. Um, I'm not entirely sure if I have... I mean, you do consider me a carbivore, but I'm not entirely sure if it's an unhealthy amount unless um, the stuff I've been eating have just been, well, uh, I don't know, um, just been a lot, like everything I have I love is carbs or anything. Well, I don't think it's an unhealthy amount that you take in. I think you'd probably take in more than the average teen does, mm. um, but your body uses it differently than adults do it too, so you kind of get a, get a bit of a pass on that. Okay. The next thing they talk about is proteins. Um, and they talk about beans, fish, eggs, and meat. I mean, these are your basic proteins. Uh, they recommend two portions of fish per week, um, and one being an oily one, so you can get the, the fatty acids there, and something like a salmon. Um, now, you, we today, we traditionally eat you know, a Chinese or a sushi dinner on, on Friday. Did you have fish today with well, that? Well, yeah, um, the one sushi I was eating did include a bit of salmon. Um, although I didn't eat it all, I still got a, I guess, decent amount in my stomach. Okay, that's good. Now, you don't do a lot of beans, though, right? You don't eat, like, beans and peas and lentils. Uh, honestly, I hate peas, and I've never really eaten beans, so. So we have to find an alternative for you there. Um, what about eggs? Do you eat eggs? Unless they're made into something else. I don't typically eat eggs. Made into what? Like a pancake or something like that? Yeah. Okay. So you just don't eat like scrambled eggs or anything like that. And how about your meats? Do you eat meat? Um, sort of. Like every Sunday. Is chicken considered meat? Yes. Okay, so I do eat chicken. That's definitely one of the meats I'm able to tolerate. Hamburgers are meat, too. Yeah, hamburgers. And <laughs> the funny thing is, I only eat the meat from the hamburger helpers, so well, does that count? That does count. That is that is definitely meat. 
Um, I also... I know you're not going to consider this meat, but I eat bologna sandwiches, so you're not going to consider it meat because it's technically it's meat. not. It's not the healthiest because they process it with a lot of preservatives and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's there's still protein in it. And sometimes mommy forces me to eat ham. Forces you. I know she's terrible like that, isn't she? Oh, it's just she knows I doesn't like I don't like ham, but it's one of the only meats she actually forces me to eat. Wow, she's a tough mom, isn't she? I still love her. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, because it's conditional upon having to eat meat. Oh, boy. So the next thing that they talk about, the next, I guess, food group they talk about here are dairy and what they call alternatives. Okay. Uh, so they say that milk, yogurt, um, the system is shutting down for some reason. I don't know what happened there. That was really weird. I lost all my screens. And they all turned red, so that was creepy. Um, yeah, technical difficulties. Hopefully we're still actually transmitting. Okay, uh, back to the show. That was weird. Yep. So milk, yogurt, cheese are all good sources of calcium and vitamin A, vitamin D, which I think everybody knows. Yeah. And vitamin B12, but they're also a good source of protein and fat. So there is good fat. Not all fat's bad. Some fat is good, especially in teens, where teens need the fat to help their body grow in different ways. Um, there are low-fat options, like mommy gets the string cheese that we like, and she gets the low-fat string cheese with that. But you could do um, almond milk, for instance. Or soy milk are some of the, you know, alternatives that you have for milks. How are you with your milk product? Um, your, your dairy, we'll say. Well, um, I typically have three different types of drinks that I would have. And one of the primary ones is milk. Um, I either, I can, I normally drink it for breakfast and whenever I really just feel like having a thing of milk. Or whenever I have dessert because... I just get a drink with my dessert now for some reason. I don't know. Um, I do eat cheese. I eat cheese when I have um, any sandwiches. Does the cheese on the nachos count? Absolutely. Okay, so that's also cheese. I don't eat yogurt. I've never wanted to eat yogurt after we after the yeah, braces. The, the yogurt's always been a kind of a sticking point with you because of the braces. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. So it sounds like you've got a decent intake of, of dairy products then. Dairy is very important for teens because it helps with your bones as you grow. It feeds the joints. It helps with your immune system. It helps with so many different things. Mm -hmm. The last thing they have here isn't really a food group, and that's oils and spreads. You know what I mean by that? Um, I'm assuming like... Are you talking about the different oils that you can use when you... When you, like, cook meat and stuff? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, like I said earlier, not all fats are bad. The, the, the growing body needs fats for energy and, and for the vitamins in there. So some fats are, are essential for growth. Um, obviously, I've had too many fats, but that's another story. Yeah. Um, the best are unsaturated fats uh, and oils, like olive oil. So when mommy cooks, if she's going to cook something that requires a little bit of oil, she'll put a little olive oil in just to coat the bottom of the pan and cook everything on top of that. Rather healthy. Uh, sunflower oil is another one. But when they talk about spreads, think bread and butter. Yeah. Right? I was so, thinking about that as well. So butter is a dairy product that it's basically dairy fat. So you spread that. We don't use butter a lot around here unless there's very specific things that we're baking. So for us, we use um, a plant-based artificial. We use country crock. So it's a low in saturated fat. It's generally much healthier. The problem is it doesn't have the same characteristics. It doesn't melt like butter. So you can't really melt it down and put it on popcorn like movie theater popcorn because it doesn't melt right. Um. And it doesn't, it doesn't blend well when you're baking things. So we can't use it for that. But if we're putting a little bit of 
uh, spread on bread or on waffles, waffles or corn. It's perfect for that. And it's healthier. So that was what we had for what to eat. And fortunately, the list of what not to eat at the site was kind of obscure. And I, and I put it in here. I wasn't going to put it in. But I put it in because some of it was weird. And it was kind of educational for me. So we talked about fish being good to eat, right? Yeah. Some fish apparently are not. Think of a fish that you think wouldn't be good to eat. Um... A puffer fish. Definitely because they're poisonous, but that one doesn't count. Okay. Um, Think of Bruce. Oh, a shark? Sharks. Yes. And I never knew this. <sighs> sharks, swordfish, and marlin are not healthy to eat because they, hang, they contain higher levels of mercury. Okay. Never knew. I never knew people ate shark yeah like, first of all i've seen them hanging on walls and stuff yeah but like but i thought it was kind of interesting that the mercury level because the mercury can have a detrimental effect on your nervous system um foods and saturated fat that's kind of an obvious one um and then they talk about foods that are high in sugar and salt now that's kind of obvious but what i thought was interesting was the levels so the study they did says that from the age of 11 and on, you should limit your salt to no more than 6 grams and your sugar to no more than 30 grams. And that's, a you know, the salt at least, 6 grams of salt is, is very low. Um, and I didn't realize it would be that low. And the real danger is, like, we don't salt our food a lot when we cook here. You might put a little salt on after the fact. Or uh, Put if, some salt in when you're trying to make spaghetti. Exactly, so it doesn't stick. So we don't really salt a lot. Where you run into that is if you go out to eat a lot. So a lot of restaurants to put a lot of extra salt in to give you the flavor and stuff like that, and they cook with a lot of salt. So that's kind of where you need to be careful with that. Ah. But 30 grams of sugar a day, that's, a, that's actually a pretty decent amount. That's a couple of tablespoons of sugar there, so you're not too bad. So that's some... Um, general guidance on healthy eating and how some of these things affect the teen body uh, from a nutrition standpoint. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and talk about the importance of the family dinner. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Starforge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. So the family dinner, okay, we are very fortunate in that we get to enjoy family dinner pretty much every night. Uh, as a kid growing up, my family typically had family dinners on the weekends. Um, my dad worked a really crazy midnight, midnight work shift and didn't always do dinner with us during the week. But there's some real benefits. There are studies that were done to show the real benefits of family dinner. Do you feel like you get benefit from our family dinners? Well, yes, I do. Um, when we are able to talk about our days and such, um, I'm able to unwind about any stress or anxiety I had during the day. And I feel like um, if people don't really, since I, I'm really... I mean, I have friends, like, 
Well, since now we, I don't go to school and I can't really talk to many of my friends since I don't have a lot of, um, well, I'm sorry. I just... You're quarantined. You don't get out to see your friends, you know, regularly. Yeah, and um, having the having the ability to at least talk to you and mommy um, and have family dinners and help unwind up after the day is helpful, along with having mommy here so that I can, um, you know. And that's interesting that you point that out because there are some things that they talk about that kind of reflect that. So they say, you know, why should we eat dinner together? Uh, most American families are starved for time to spend together. Now, granted, under current circumstances, we're not because we spend all of our time together when we're here. Well, except you. You just work. That's true. I'm still going out of the house to work. Yeah. Um, but the point is is that there's so much going on, school and work and hobbies and, and technology and everything that takes you, your attention away. So the family dinner is a chance to sit down. Um, and they say that the dinner may be the only time of the day when we can reconnect. You know, you may not see the family the rest of the day. Um, but they talk about, like you said, dinner is a time to relax, recharge, laugh, tell stories, catch up on the day, the ups and downs, um, while developing a sense of who we are as a family. So it's, it's really, it's central to that, that family essence, really, they talk about. Um, and, and, you know, they talk about the specific benefits and let me ask you, I'm going to, I'm going to go down this list, but I'd like to know if you see these same benefits. Okay. So researchers have confirmed that sharing a family meal is good for the spirit, the brain and the health of all the family members. Do you find it to be a healthy time for you? Yeah, I mean, that's the time where I can unwind any stress, and it's also a time to where I can um, access some joy and just have the weird goofball conversations that we all normally have, that we normally have together. Absolutely. Recent studies link regular family dinners with many behaviors such as lower rates of substance abuse, which would have never even occurred to me, lower rates of teen pregnancy, lower rates of depression, as well as a higher grade point average and higher self-esteem. Do you think you get any of those benefits? You know, certainly your grade point average, we got your letter from the school today that you made principals list for straight A's again. That might be evidence of this, but do you feel that it helps your self-esteem as well? Um, yeah, it shows that, um, I have it. Well, it definitely shows me that I'm way more fortunate than a lot of other people, and it um, shows that I should be grateful. Like you were talking about today, we were talking about the other day, like how you used to always have canned um, foods, mommy, canned vegetables, mommy always had can um frozen vegetables and how I'm should be fortunate that I'm able to have canned fresh and frozen at the same time so it makes me realize that I um definitely should be grateful for all of everything I have um plus you guys are fun to hang around with oh thank you that's very nice of you to say that um they go on to say that the study indicates that for young children Dinner conversation is more potent vocabulary booster than reading, and the stories told around the kitchen table help children build resilience. Now, I don't know about the vocabulary part. I, I don't think I use a particularly robust vocabulary around the dinner table. <laughs> nope. But the story part I thought was kind of interesting. I know we tell a lot of stories about when mommy and I were young and growing up and meeting each other and stuff like that. Do you find you get benefit from, from those kinds of interactions with mommy and I? Yeah, because I get to learn about how you guys grew up and how I'm, I'm able to have it slightly more different, but also still have some similarities with it. And also there's occasionally a laugh, when, a good like little joke that comes in with it. Sure, yeah. They go on to say that one of the other benefits is that family meals lower the obesity rate and eating disorders in children and adolescents too. So I never really 
kind of connected those things, but I guess they're right. You're looking at a healthier meal plus all of the mental benefits that you get. So family dinners really do have a significant impact. Uh, it's unfortunate not everyone can, can share in them. Um, and a family dinner can be different things. And that's the next thing that they talk about. So what is a family dinner? What if only one parent is home for dinner? They say as long as there are two family members eating together, taking, talking, and enjoying one another, that's a family dinner. And it made me think, well, some of the nights, you know, before all this quarantine stuff happened, uh, mommy would go to the salon and she would have, you know, her mommy time at the salon, getting her nails done or, or her hair or whatever. And you and I would kind of have daddy daughter night. And we'd go out and we'd have dinner together. And that's exactly what they're talking about here. I wasn't cooking dinner, which is probably a good thing. Yeah. Uh, my, my cooking repertoire is rather limited. Yeah. Um, but the time that we would spend together, you know, we would joke, we would play games, we would talk about the, our days and stuff like that. So that interaction is really one of those things that kind of, you know, I certainly have fond memories of it. I don't know if you do. I do too. Like all the times that we like, um, um, like we can um, I remember that we always used to have, like, the little hockey thing where we have, like, the piece of straw. We always rolled it up, and yep. then we'd just do the little flicking thing across it until, like, it fell off the table. And yeah. Go yeah. So it's, you know, it's quality time. Yep. Um, they ask, well, what if it's takeout? And they say that if, if the meal is eaten with conversation and storytelling, then it doesn't really matter, you know, who makes the dinner, Right. Uh, the one caveat is that takeout may not have the same nutritional value as home, so you kind of lose some of that that nutritional value. But but for us as a family, takeout really is kind of an integrated part of our schedule. Um, most of the time during the week, mommy cooks, and and we're very fortunate in that mommy's a very good cook. Yeah. And what's amazing to me is what she can produce in a very limited amount of time. Um, not so much now because she's home, yeah. you know, but she would get home from work and immediately begin putting dinner together. And she could put, you know, a world-class meal together in 15 minutes. Whereas, you know, I learned from a mom who was a stay-at-home mom. So everything that my mom did was cooked from scratch. So it was no big deal to start cooking dinner at like one o'clock in the afternoon and taking a few hours to make it. So most of the stuff that I make is not, I can't fit in the 15 minutes unless I'm microwaving something. Um, so most of the time it's mommy making dinner and a very good job of it, but she gets a break once in a while and take out as a chance for mommy to have that break. And she tends to be much more, I don't know, relaxed. She's not as stressed when she's, when we're doing takeout. We usually do takeout once or twice a week to support local businesses. Um, but there's definitely benefit to that too. Would you agree? Yeah. Um, do you think when we do, like tonight we did takeout. So we did Chinese tonight. Yeah, we do every, Friday. every Friday. So do you think a family dinner with takeout is different than a family dinner that's made at home? Well, not exactly, and I definitely think it still has, like, the benefits, especially for the parent who continues to cook, like Mommy, like, it gives her time to relax, and she doesn't, and she, and like you said before, she's not as stressed, um, plus, we have, for some reason, interesting conversations on it, just cause, I don't know, like, it's just, like, at some point you have to mention that, uh, like, the, whatever mommy like eats with some type of seafood like i just noticed sometimes you always go like what type of seafood you got this time like well and that's the thing with mommy mommy and daddy eat very different foods um and the one thing i can say about mommy is she always has a very good variety of food that she eats and it's always very colorful whereas you know the house that i grew up in we were not you know, we were poor and we didn't have the luxury of having a lot of different things on our plate. It was a, it was a starch, 
a vegetable, and a meat. Um, as a result, everything looks very earthy. You know, you don't get a lot of colors when you do something like that. Yeah. Um, so for me, I eat very plain when it comes to that. I don't like a lot of spices and stuff. And mommy tends to have, you know, a much more refined appetite than I do. So every time I see what she gets for takeout, it's always interesting to, to find out what it is because it's always something different. She always keeps me on my toes. Yep. The last thing they talk about with family dinners is what if the TV is on? Now, we don't eat dinner with the TV on anymore. Uh, we used to have a TV in the kitchen, and, and we'd have it on. And for us, it was mostly background noise. Uh, but I did find that it kind of cut down on the conversation. Uh, when we rearranged the kitchen a bit, we, we pulled the TV out, and we don't have it in there anymore. And I do find that we talk a lot more. Um, do you think that the lack of a TV in the kitchen is a good thing or a bad thing? I definitely think it's a good thing. I remember, especially when I was younger, I would just always draw my attention to the TV, and just because I've always, just because it's technology and it's interesting, and I want to know what happens next, I've just been like, I'm always just drawn to cartoons and just what's going on on TV. Like, I don't know. I'm just, a, I just get attracted to noise and want to know what it's coming from. S but we do listen to music from our Alexa. Um, and that, then it's just background noise. It's not really interesting to watch the lyrics go by unless you don't know the lyrics and you want to sing the song or something like that. Um, but yeah, I definitely think it's better because now my attention isn't so much on the TV rather than on my family. Although we still have those moments I notice where no one is talking and it's just like... Well, you know, sometimes we just are enjoying the, the meal. And sometimes there's just nothing to talk about. Um, it's rare. You know, we, we have a lot of very good discussions at the dinner table, but... Especially um, with a child who monologues a lot. Absolutely. So I wanted to sort of point out the importance, not just of nutrition and the experience of cooking, but um, family dinners themselves and the importance that they have and, and the significance that they've certainly had on my life and, and it sounds like on yours as well. So we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about teens and cooking and show a little bit of your cooking. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. So there's uh, six reasons, at least the one site that I looked at, had six reasons for teens to get in the kitchen. Uh, and let me, let me throw these at you and see how you feel about these. Uh, so it teaches kids, teaches teens about healthy eating. Do you find that you're benefiting from learning to cook with mommy for a healthy eating? Uh, yeah, especially when, like, um, I remember one day we actually made, like, an, a, a really big batch of salad, and it... Um, definitely taught me like the different aspects of the salad and the fact and it definitely like I definitely think that the homemade salad is a little better than the pre-made salad because the we used to get like pre-made salads that were just plasticky the lettuce wasn't even lettuce it just it's like plastic and I never liked it but when we had made but whenever we got um, the stuff fresh we made it together it 
I noticed it tasted a lot better, and um, it was nice and fresh, and I just really like the salad now. So speaking of time together, do you feel that learning to cook with mommy helps to give you quality time with mommy? Is it another bonding experience that you have with her? Well, yeah, like, um, since we have a lot of time home now, mommy has started um, asking me if I wanted to help her out, like, We normally make pancakes or waffles, and I've always loved helping her out with that because not only does it give us, it not only does it let me know more recipes, but it also um, um, gives us quality time as well. Very good point. Um, It also goes on to say that you learn to fend for yourself. Do you feel that? In the event that mommy or daddy weren't around, you'd be able to make yourself your own meals and take care of yourself for a little while? I mean, yeah. I mean, right now, whenever you guys are alone, you always just make sure there's something for for me to microwave. But I've definitely started to make more meals. I know how to make breakfast uh, and different meals for dinner and lunch. Um, So I definitely think if you guys had to be gone for an entire day, I could be able to fend for myself for food. Good. Now, do you feel that being able to cook helps to boost your self-confidence? That's another thing they say. I mean, yeah, like the fact that I'm able to, like, before when you got when I got home early from school and finished my schoolwork and you guys were still um, at work, I would make dinner for you guys, and it definitely helped boost my self-confidence saying that I was able to make dinner for my f- It was, like, nice knowing that I could make dinner for my family. Um, the next thing they talk about, and this is one that I think you and I kind of share, and that is it teaches them to keep the family recipes going and strong. And that's one of the things you and I share, because the one thing that you and I make is, uh, my mother's recipe for cheesecake. Mm -hmm. And we usually do that around the holiday. So it's kind of almost like a holiday tradition for us. Yeah. Um, are there other family recipes that that we uh, abide by? Um, I think we went by a cookie recipe at, um, at one point. I think I totally screwed that one up. Yeah, we screwed up that one once, and then the second time we tried, it actually turned out better, and we actually made cookies. <laughs> it turns out that baking and cooking are two very different things. Yeah. Baking is a very... Uh, Messy experience. Well, no, it's, it's a very precise experience. Yeah, Uh, It's a very chemistry-oriented thing. Yeah, and unless you're good at chemistry and able to do math right, then you're not going to really do well in baking. Well, uh, my problem was I didn't follow the instructions. So Ah. I put the ingredients in in the wrong order, thinking, well, they're all going in the bowl, so it doesn't really matter, right? And it turned out, yeah, they matter. Yeah, because there are different substances like liquids and solids, and if you put them in the wrong order... It could turn out either dusty or way too liquidy, and you need. Oh, these were dusty. Yeah, they were were dusty. dusty. They were just dusty. We did not have a lot of. (laughs) It it did not go the way we anticipated. So we had to throw all that out and start all over again. Yeah. And the last thing they talk about here is it teaches teens about giving back. And I think you kind of touched on on that feeling of, you know, being able to make dinner for Mommy and I and to show your appreciation and stuff. Yeah, because like you said before, Mommy works hard ev- pretty much every weekday to make us m- our meals. And since I was staying home earlier than you guys, I thought, hey, why don't I make dinner for you guys since you guys probably had a long day at work. So, um... I just wanted to do something um, so that mommy could have a little more break and uh, not be as stressed as she normally is. Yeah, and I think I think that was very popular, certainly with with mommy and I. And we'll talk about what you make in a little bit, your your, your repertoire. Um, so they go on to talk about some simple tips for getting teens started in the kitchen. And I think all teens should cook. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl doesn't matter your age. You're never too young to learn how to start cooking or to start helping out. First thing they say is start simple. Get them to do simple things like peeling vegetables or stirring the pot. Uh, That was how you got started with the cheesecake was you wanted to run the beaters in the the mix. Yeah. Um, Anything to spark their interest without overwhelming them. Uh, Then they say pick foods they like. 
I think that's a smart move, right? Yeah, like, I think the first meal I ever really learned how to make was spaghetti and meatballs, and I really like the spaghetti and meatballs, so. Exactly. Uh, and then the third one they say is make it a regular family event, maybe one night a week. You're going to help make dinner. You're going to make dinner all by yourself. Um, decide on the time together, make it a weekly event, and you go from there. And, and it's something to look forward to at that point. Um, and we were doing that before all this stuff happened. That's that's exactly the pattern that we were in. I think it worked out very well for us. So that was all I had for the teens in cooking. Get your teens to cook. Get them in the kitchen. Use that as, an, as a teaching opportunity and a chance to, to help build their self-confidence. Let's take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll talk. take a look at some of the stuff that you've done this week. And we'll talk about the recipes, what you cooked, and some of the other things that you cook. So you cooked breakfast last weekend. Was it Sunday, I think, right? I think it was. So Sunday. So we have some footage of that. Why don't you just sort of talk us through you cooking breakfast here? Okay, so um, here I'm cutting some of the potatoes that we were going to make. Um, the meal we're actually making was bacon, eggs, and potatoes, and we also threw in some oranges later at the end. We sure did. So it was more of a breakfast for you guys since I had technically already eaten, but I still wanted to help out, and um, I also wanted to learn how to make um, some meals. Mommy actually taught me how to cut the potatoes since there was a specific way on doing it, and um, yeah, so. So you cut up the potatoes, and then the potatoes were fried up with a little bit of... Uh Olive oil, I guess mommy was using. I don't know. I think it was vegetable oil. Was it? Okay. So she fried them up in a little bit of oil. We can see that here on the stove. Then the little droid looking thing from Star Wars that's on the counter that mommy's in front of. Uh, that's an air fryer. Yeah. And in there is our bacon. And I think we have some footage of when I was um, flipping the bacon. Right. Um, so we were, we were warming it up there. The bacon is on the stove now. Um, well, not on the stove. Then. Well, no, it is. It's oh, on yeah. the stove there on the cutting board. Yeah. So the next thing you had to do was cut that bacon up. Yep. That bacon goes into the uh, air, air fryer. fryer. Yep. And this was, I think, the maple um, bacon. I don't remember if it was the maple or not. Oh, there it is. Yep. There's... Mommy um, mixing it around. I think that we had already cooked it a bit, and she was just um, showing me how to move it around. Right. And this is, you know, air fryers are a wonderful thing. They make it so much easier to cook with, and it's very healthy because all the, the fat from the bacon just seeps to the bottom there, so you don't, you're not sit, it's not sitting in the fat. Yeah. Um, so the bacon that we get is actually from a local Amish farmer's market, and it's absolutely fantastic bacon. You're not a bacon lover, though, are you? No, not really, but I'll still make it for you guys. Oh, yeah, we were cracking eggs for the um, scrambled eggs. So mommy was cracking them, you were pouring them, and yeah. then you had the pleasure of mixing the eggs. Yeah. Uh, and we don't do anything crazy with the eggs. We don't do omelets or anything like that. We were just doing scrambled eggs with cheese. Yeah, we just add the shredded cheese in and then mix it once the eggs are mixed. It's always good to have mommy crack the eggs because when I do it, I always get shells in them and I can't stand shells in my eggs. Yeah, whenever I do. Oh, well, here um, I am checking the bacon, trying not to burn myself. Right. So the bacon's pretty much done at this point, and it's a lot easier cooking it in there than it is in the frying pan. So our uh, our potatoes are done at this point in time. We microwave the potatoes for like a minute just to heat them up, warm them up a little bit, soften them, and then we fry them uh, with a little bit of oil. And there you are. Mixing the eggs. Learning how to do eggs. This was your first time that you, yeah. you did eggs. I didn't exactly do it right the first time, but you know. No, but I think you had the right idea. You just, I think you needed to be a little bit more rigorous with it. Yep. And, uh, and there's the final product of the bacon there. Yep. Mommy's just making sure everything's nice and brown. And there are the eggs. Mommy has to do it because I. Um, Mommy's master class on egg making. You gotta flip them. You gotta fold them. You gotta keep them off the uh, edges. off the edges, and uh, keep scraping them off the pan so they don't burn. I can't stand burnt eggs. Yep. 
But uh, mommy does a very good job making the eggs these days. The eggs look like Play-Doh to me right now. Okay. I don't know why. And there we are. And there's mommy putting um, the You know, I probably shouldn't be plate. doing this at, you know, 7 o'clock at night because now I'm hungry looking at the bacon. <laughs> and, then and there's, there's the, the final, final product. product. So that was our breakfast with our side of oranges on there as well. Yeah. We didn't film. Well, we did film the orange cutting, but we didn't put it in. Right, that that wound up on the cutting room floor because it didn't come out so well. Yeah. So the other meal that we did make, we can walk through that real quick. We did dinner, right? Yeah. So why don't you tell us what we did for dinner? Okay. Um. So for dinner, we were making um. Baked, chicken. Baked chicken. Baked chicken with um cucumber with a side of cucumbers and what else did we add? We had uh, corn on the cob. Oh yeah. Uh, mommy had uh, Brussels sprouts, right? Yeah, um, and I also had two potatoes. Right. So you got the bread, the chicken this time, because mommy just lightly breads the chicken. Yeah, and we had a new um, way of doing it that we haven't actually done before. Yeah, mommy usually does it in a bag. Yeah. I used to do it, but I do it because one of the dishes that I make is chicken parm. And when I do it, I make a mess because I have a, a dip that I put it in, then I have a... Uh, breading bowl that I put it in, and by the time I'm done, the whole kitchen's a mess. So mommy has a master way of doing this. Um, so we had to obviously let the chicken uh, defrost beforehand. Yeah, because it was really hard. Yeah. And I also was the odd one out since I had a chicken leg instead of an actual um, chicken breast because I just Well, eat. mommy didn't have a chicken breast either. I think she had a thigh or a wing or something. She had bones in hers. Yeah. I don't do bones. Yeah, you're the only one who don't goes boneless. So we have a, a plastic container, which ironically comes from our Chinese food place. Ironically. Uh, we put that... The chicken. The breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs in it, and then we put chicken the chicken goes in, in, and then I just shake it like crazy. And then you shake it like crazy. And hopefully it doesn't open up and make a mess. Yeah. <laughs> that would be bad. Yep. So we uh, bread the three pieces of chicken that we make. We coat the pan with some spray Oil. coating, I guess. I don't know what it was. I don't either. Pam or something like that, probably. And then when it comes out of there, everything's fairly nice and clean, and it's entirely coated. Which I always find amusing. It's just, it's a very nice light coating too, so it's not a heavy like batter coating. Yeah. Uh, it's just enough to give it a little bit of uh, flavor, and it actually helps to coat the outside to keep the moisture in. Because when mommy cooks these, the chicken's very moist when it comes out, which is nice. Yeah, and I remember afterwards eating this. I really, uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, I guess that also kind of goes into the point of how it gets you into healthier eating habits. So, yeah. And it's funny because it seems like, you know, you tend to enjoy the meals that you make yourself more because it's an accomplishment for you. Yeah. There's the breaded chicken. Yep. So. And then here's mommy. Um, she was actually teaching me how to cut the Brussels sprouts and she likes eating Brussels sprouts. Right. We had to clean the Brussels sprouts before we could cook them. Yeah. So what I did was I cut off the end um, which was hard on the bigger ones, so she needed to help me out with the bigger ones. Because, um, I don't know. Well, and it's good. I mean, it's, I'd rather you be careful like that than be overly aggressive with the knife. Yeah. Until you're comfortable with the knife. She also told me the right way on how to cut it instead of... Um... And there you go. You know, the smaller ones, you're going through those like an ace. Yeah, and she also told me to um, put the knife... Get the knife through my fingers. Um, as well, the way not you through your fingers. Well, not through my fingers. The but knife should never go through your fingers. I oh yeah. Um, this we already we had already cooked the chick. I think one side. Yeah, we one side one of the side chicken. And, had to flip it. and then we put the Brussels sprouts and potatoes in. Right. Oh, you baked the potatoes. Oh yeah. That. And yeah. there's the final product on. We also microwaved the corn. We sure did. So I think overall, I think the meals came out fantastic. It was a new learning experience for you. 
Uh, so you got to learn a few new techniques. What are some of the other things that you cook? I know you've made spaghetti and meatballs. Yeah, that's one of my um, premier ones. Yeah. Um, and before we actually had the air fryer, we had an active fry. Right. And I used to um, make an. I used to make like pork in there for you guys. Um, I also. I also used to make um, our ultimate mac and cheese, which was. Um, which I just made mac and cheese sort of similar how I would make, um, spaghetti. Um, right. and I would, and we would include bacon, chicken, and sausage all together. And I would put it in the air fryer, not active fry. Now the active fry is an air fryer as well, but it's a little bit different because it has an agitator in the middle. So as it's cooking, the agitator goes around and stirs it up. So it cooks a little bit different. You can't put as much stuff in there, um... But uh, still a very, very healthy way of cooking because you, it allows you to cook things in, it, in their own juices. You don't need to have a lot of uh, oils or fats or anything like that to cook them with. Yeah. So, but let me ask you this. Do you enjoy cooking? Yes, I do. Do you, is it something you'd want to learn more about? Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, um, Gma had actually given me a cookbook and in a really amazing apron, which was Minecraft themed, which is awesome. Yeah. I love it. Um, and it has a bunch of different little recipes for kids at, to try out. And th um, I was hoping on hopefully doing some of these. Um, we were also thinking about at some point doing banana bread if we can actually get the eggs for it because we got the baking soda and baking powder. And it's which tough getting the ingredients these days, that's for sure. Yep. Cool. Well, hopefully over time, with with the time at home that you have, you'll learn more. Uh, I know you've helped me when I've done my chicken parm. Uh, the other family recipe that we do that I make uh, is um, my mom's mashed potatoes. You help with that as well. Uh, that and cheesecake. So that's, that's about it. That and breakfast foods I can cook. So uh, my ability to cook, I can cook enough probably to survive for, for a little while. Uh, I, I am not a chef under any circumstance. Uh, in fact, I think you can cook more things than I can at this point. Yeah, we just have to check. So so that was all we had today. Did you have any closing remarks that you wanted to offer? Um, Yeah, okay. I have a few. We'll come back real quick, do your closing remarks and any shout-outs, and uh, give our contact. All right, go for closing remarks. Okay, so I'm just going to make the, um, the first one pretty short. Uh, try and eat healthy and have nutritious food. Um, that way you can live a longer life. And I also know eating healthy can help prevent diseases, which is definitely going to be important, especially during the, time, the times now. Um, also, I want to say that it is important to learn how to cook, um, not just for, um, not just for, like, um, teens, but, like, anyone. Like you said, you're never too young or, um, old to learn how to cook. Um, and I definitely think learning how to cook and bake has definitely, um, given me many different benefits, um, including, of course, the, um, time I have spent with mommy and definitely a a very good learning experience for me. So I know teaching your teens how to cook is um, bene very beneficial. Okay. Any shout outs? I'm going to definitely give a shout out to mommy because she um, was the person who told me how to make most of the stuff I know. Um, you may help me with a few, including like the cheesecake and the, the unhealthy <laughs> stuff I help with. Yeah. yeah mm. um, she has definitely taught me how to make all my uh, all the meals I know how to make and she's definitely very supportive of um, the fact that I do like cooking and she definitely wants to help me improve with that so shout out to you mommy awesome. I'm actually going to give a shout out today too okay. and I'm going to give a shout out to mommy and all the moms out there uh, who tend to be the ones that cooking falls on, the responsibility of cooking falls on moms and, and the women of our lives the most. Um, and mommy does a fantastic job. She is by far 
the best 15 minute chef out there bar none. Uh, and being mother's day, happy mother's day to all the ladies out there, uh, who are the loving mothers that we know you are and the fantastic chefs to keep your family going. Yep. So Yay. <laughs> that was all we had this week. Uh, I do want to encourage everyone to uh, subscribe on all the podcast networks, Apple podcast, Google stitcher, uh, Spotify, YouTube. Spotify, uh, YouTube. Um, you can reach our website at insightsintothings.com where we have links to all of our downloads, audio, video. Um, our audio podcasts are under Insights in the Teens. Our video podcasts are under Insights into Things. You can email us your comments at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can catch us on Twitter at uh, insights underscore things. You can catch us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. Uh, oh, Twitch. Yes. We stream six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. Did you have anything to add Munchkin? And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights in the Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights in the Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. Which we are filming this weekend. I said it was we were going to do it last weekend, and we had some technical difficulties. Don't wah, wah, wah. So Sam should actually be in the studio with us this week to record. So that was it uh, for this week. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.